Right, hello and welcome back to my uh, tile-based system thingy in Unity tutorial. Today we're going to be doing like the saving and loading of grids of tiles. So let's get to it. So first off, let's turn off the loading. So <coughs> here we start. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, here we start with just a blank grid. Uh, so let's add some tiles. So let's say we want a square of wheat and we want some roads to just be along the outside of it. And just have road going off to there or something, and road to there, and just draw a happy face to the side. Go nose, and there we go. So I've got a shortcut set up to save this called Z. And hopefully, yep, yeah, it'll write the data. And then if I press stop again, and go back to the, I think it was the grid manager, and set the loading grid to true, then we will see that when it generates the grid, it'll have what we just drew. So we will get to, I'll explain how that works, basically. Okay, so I'll just be going over and explaining how we, uh, we want to save and load these grids. But first off, we need to consider what we need to do with it first. So basically, we want to take the grid of tiles that we make and find a way to write that to a file and then read them in a way that uh, you know we can reassemble all the tiles into a grid and we don't currently like currently save buildings or unit locations or whatever that'll come later with a bit i've got to explain at the end but yeah so let's go over how i did this first okay so first off just a few quick changes to the tile masterclass was that we i added a uh, just a public string, which is just a type. It's, uh, it's like a, an identifier so what for what kind of tile it is. So say we use a road tile, it just on the awake, it just sets the type to road. And for wheat tile, it sets the type to wheat. This is just basically so we can identify it. And yeah, so that was one thing we need to do. And I think I also added, uh, yeah. On the tile change manager, we use this, basically, we want to be able to get the tiles by the type of the tile. So basically, we pass in the string of the type we want, or have, and it'll go through all the tiles and return the prefab game object of the tile that is associated with that type. So if you say wheat to this get tiles by type, it'll return the wheat prefab. And yeah, uh, that's that. For the change, uh, what was the grid generator? Uh, again, for the grid generator, uh, it was just it doesn't actually do much. Well, I haven't changed much actually. Uh, I've just added a few new methods so that the save grid can interact with it. So basically, got a public boolean for loading grid. So that'll say, all right, when we create a grid, do we want to? Uh, do we want to like use a grid? Use like create a new blank grid from the start, or to use say, friggin. I'm sorry, I'm losing my words. Do we want to load in a grid from a file, or do we want to like just use the blank grid? And then we've got this new if statement or part of the if statement saying so. If we don't want, to, if we do want to load a grid, we'll call the read grid from file in save grid. And again, we have some uh, basically just a getter and setter for the grid of tiles. So. These will be used by the uh, save grid in the loading and saving of the grid, respectively. So yeah. Okay, so first things I want to mention after that, I had I had a little cutaway just there. So sorry if this is a bit sort of jumpy, but uh, first thing I'm going to mention is the two serializable classes I've made here, just to explain why I did what I did. Basically, because you might notice that uh, I've not actually got a game object or anything in them. Uh, like you might be thinking, like why don't you just serialize the game objects? And the simple answer is you can't. Now oh, I just punch my Mac. That's not good. Uh, yeah. So Unity types, so like uh, sprites, uh, game objects, etc. Basically, anything that's specifically Unity. Unity. Sorry. And not C plus plus, not C plus. What am I on about? Uh, C sharp. Sorry, they can't be serialized. But things like 
ants, bulls, lists can be serialized. So we do that. Even vector twos can't be serialized, which I found odd, but whatever. So basically, we're wanting to be able to find a way to convert this grid into a format that we can only use serializable data so that we can write it. And that is why I added the string.type. So we can just have this string that acts as a reference saying, all right, so we've got this type of, we've got this string, we want to get this kind of tile. And again, we just have integers for the grid X and grid Y positions in the world and a Boolean to say if it's walkable. And again, we have the grid data, which is basically just storage for all the, uh, all the plots face. Uh, it stores all the tiles basically in a list. And since we, well, we don't really need to use a 2D array because we're storing the grid X and Y and as well as the width and height of the grid. So we can just reassemble it from that and then just grab the grid X's and grid Y's and whatnot and we'll all be fine. So no need to have a 2D like array of tiles and grid. We just have a list to write them to. And first off, okay, so yeah. Uh, we've also got to import a few things. So we're using using dot system dot runtime dot serialization dot format as dot binary, which is basically what writes the serializable classes down here uh, to a file. Uh, using system dot io to like access reading and writing files to the in this particular instance application dot persistent data path, which I'll get to shortly. Got collections dot generic for lists and using system for a reason that I've forgotten. But if you just have there, the code will work and we've, yeah, the code will work if you're copying along. Also, uh, okay, so yeah, and that's my stuff to mention. So we don't need to read that. That's just for me. Uh, so first off, public string file name. Uh, for like development purposes, that I've just got it as a public string so I can like write whatever I want to save the file as in the inspector here. So currently I'm just saying grid one, but you might want to keep it like as a private string and then have, yeah. And then we've got a grid data folder, which should be, this is basically what I'm using as the entire path to the file. So I'll show you when that gets set in a minute. So first off on the awake function, we're setting me to equal this. So we just have a static reference to the say grid class or the instance in the world. So we can just use it without having to go find object of type or whatever. Next, we make a path to the file the way we want to save or create a string to the path to the file by combining the application.persistent data path, which is a folder that Unity specifically sets out as a place for saving files. Uh, it does vary depending on your platform, but I think if I go on to, I have a place to display it. Uh, yeah, mine is under users, Richard Scott, library, application support. Uh, it'll say default company and tile based RTS, then grid data and grid one dot that. So that is where my file is for storing the data. Uh, basically, then we do a check if if the directory exists. So we've got a grid data folder in our application .system data path for this particular application. And if it doesn't exist, it just creates a folder. So we can create a directory at that address. So we're, in, we're creating a folder called grid data. And we've got some debug book log to say that we have. And then we assign grid data folder to str, which is just the combined like full string of our name. And yeah, so let's go over the writing first. So basically what we're doing, we're creating a new instance of the grid data, which is that serializable class we had, which has the width, height, and the list of tiles. Uh, we just get the grid dimensions and add them to the, store them in the file. And then we just initialize the list in tiles and grid because it doesn't have in the uh, grid data, sorry. We need to additionalize it because I just don't have a wait function or anything. So you've got to actually say that this is a new list that stores tile data. Otherwise you'll get errors when you're trying to add stuff to it. And then what we do is we go through each of the grid, uh, the tiles, we get the tile mask class and we get the type and the X, Y coordinates. And if it's walkable and we add all that to 
a new tile data that we created just for temporary storage. And then we add that tile data to the list. Uh, and don't worry about it being like a local variable. It's only in scope while we're using this for loop because it will remain in the uh, tile data for the file once we've added it to the list. So that'll work fine. And then we have a simple, we'll have a little try and catch just to stop any crashes. Uh, first off, we check if the file exists at the grid data folder. So this will be checking for a persistent data path with grid data and the file name dot dat attached, whereas the directory dot exists was just looking for the folder of grid data. So if it doesn't exist, we just create the file at that location. And then we get a new file stream, which basically just opens the file that is there. And we serialize the, use the binary format here to serialize the data in GD to the file. So then we close the file. I'm not sure of the specifics of how a binary format or a file stream works. I just know they do what they do and the results are correct. So if you want to look up to that, look into that, just like use the documentation or something. Uh, and then just like catching an exception to see if anything goes wrong with it. Then you can say, I know I've tried to write to like the documents folder in the past, and I think I got it working on loud or quiet, but I've not got it working here, so I'll have to look into that. So that might be something you want to do, like if you want to write to my documents instead of uh, the, the persistent data path just for accessibility or whatever. That's your choice. I'll leave it up to you. And then we have a read grid from file method, which basically, I'm just going to put that again. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, so again, we're checking if the file exists, then we use a binary formatter again and a file stream, but instead of using new file stream, we just use file.open, uh, grid data folder, we give it the address of the file, and file mode to open it. And then we use the binary formatter to deserialize the file of grid data into a, just a data thing, a data local variable. And then we create a loaded grid by passing in this uh, grid data class. And what this does is it creates a new like 2D array of loaded uh, called loaded grid, which is basically just where we're going to store these tiles one by one when we go through the list tiles and grid that's in the grid data class. Uh, and we're just basically going to recreate them in the world by instantiating this game object. So first we're going to get the type using the method in the tile changer method, tile changer class, sorry. No, tile change manager class, whatever. Get my words mixed up. Uh, we instantiate them at the X and Y positions for the grid and we set the rotation to zero. Set the transform to be this object so it, all the tiles are stored under the grid manager. Uh, we just give them a name of their X and Y and their type. And we also set the grid coordinates to be the grid X and grid Y that were stored in the component. And we set active to true. So we enable the game object because all the prefabs are set as inactive. On when because they're a child object of the uh, one of the objects we have. Yep, they're a child object of the game controller, so we just have them as inactive, just so we can't see them in the world because they're prefab. And we set the loaded grid to x and y to be the game object to the, the tile mass class that we get from the game objects we just created. That is the new tile, and then once all that's done. We just assign the uh, grid. We pass through this loaded grid that we've assembled, and it sets it to the uh, grid here. And that is what creates our grid of tiles. Do you know else I've missed? No, I just added some shortcuts for Z and X to uh, load mine myself. You could expand this a fair bit. You could add like a say input in names for the files. You could add checks to see if the file already exists and an overwriting message. You know, there's a lot of stuff you could do to make it better. I might go back to this and do it, but this is just like the basic. It saves and loads grids of tiles, which is what you want. I'm just trying to keep this generic 
uh, for simplicity's sake, so you can apply it anywhere. So say if you wanted to build like an RPG world or whatever, um, or just anything really, SimCity, you know, Age of Empires, all that sort of tile-based. So, you know, do what you want. Uh, but as for the like future of the tutorial series, I'm sorry I can't make... Uh, well, I've been slow on the update because I've been doing uni stuff, which I will show you soon with my procedurally generated roguelike that I've had to make for my project and failing to do image manipulation in MATLAB, which is a fucking bore like, but whatever. I'm going to be turning this sort of a tutorial series into more of an RTS focused series. So we're going to be doing like, well, because it's hard to be generic and do some of the stuff I wanted to do because I, want, I want, kind of want to try and make an RTS basically. So I'm going to take it more in that kind of direction. So if you do watch the RTS tutorials, then thank you, uh, as first thing. But you'll have to have watched these first to have some idea of how all the grid systems work and the pathfinding and whatnot. So yeah. But if you want to take, you can just like stop here and then you'll have your own grid system to work out whatever you want to do with it. And that should be good. As always, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. It's a nice boost to my self confidence that people actually watch and subscribe. So, you know. Uh, yeah, go download my shit on HEO, loud or quiet. I made a little update a couple of days ago on like some new cutscene storytelling shit I'm trying. So that's good. Uh, yeah, bye.